Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. The Bible says, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, Hallelujah. I love him from the depth of my heart. And I am deeply grateful. I'm not an ingrate. I study the dealings of God in my life. And I generously appreciate him. You never hear it from my mouth. That I complain and grumble. And I say Lord why? Why didn't you give me tea? Why didn't you give me bread? Why didn't you give me a suit? Oh I'm more than grateful. There are many things to be grateful about. Number one I'm grateful because I know him. This has secured my eternal destiny. Number two, I know him because he has taught me his ways. He's taught me how to live. The word of God has given me wisdom. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. I love him because he has been faithful. Faithful. It's a quality that human beings hardly have. Faithfulness. The ability to stay true and to be consistent. Ever faithful. Never changing. Even when we change, his nature refuses him from changing. And he remains faithful. He calls himself the faithful and the true God. Hallelujah. God has been merciful to us. No matter how stubborn you are in this place, no matter how hardened you are, you know that he has been faithful. Hallelujah. He has been faithful. Many of us look at what he's doing. I sat back and while um, our brother and his lovely wife were giving their testimony, you don't know how this, you don't know what these things do to me. It's easy to think that Joshua Selman is behind all of these things and I thank God for being a channel. But can I tell you something? Like John said, there is one who is mightier than I. Hmm. He said, he must increase that I must decrease. In one minute, I'd like you to lift both of your hands and at least remember two or three things God has done and tell him thank you. Bless be the name of the Lord. I thank you for life. Have you considered how many of your prayer requests have been granted? Lord, it was like a dream, but the pain is gone. It's like a dream, finally. I'm a graduate. The job has finally come. After many years, a man has finally come to propose to me. I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. I never believed the genotype would change. But it's history. That which was a mountain yesterday has become my testimony. That which was a reason for my tears has become a reason for my joy and I give you praise oh how can I forget your faithfulness
Just bless him. Just love him and tell him how grateful you are. The situation would have killed you, but you're still alive. Still alive. When men concluded about you, when you even concluded about yourself, Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for being a faithful God. Hallelujah. I sing praises to your name. Lift your hands. Oh God, praises to your name. Everything to me. You are everything to me, and I exalt your holy name. I exalt your
if you never do anything else if you never do anything else we are still grateful we are still grateful hallelujah I like us to thank God for just one thing before we sit down I like you to pray and say I see my life changing and Lord I give you praise truly if you're not changing it's alright you can just worship me but I see my life changing my goodness my goodness my goodness my goodness I see my life increasing in wisdom increasing in grace yes Lord you have been faithful yes Lord you have been faithful Give you praise, praise, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you and we love you. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. You're welcome. Please be seated. Welcome everyone, once again, inside and outside, may God bless you. Again, let me remind us that we are sowing to the Spirit. A day of reward is coming. Hallelujah. It says, do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he will reap. The Bible encourages us and it says, let us not be weary in well-doing. Because weariness is part of the limitations of this body. We can be weary. But it says, let us not be weary in well-doing. It said, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. I told us last week, the word of the Lord that came to us, that we must be consistent. We must be consistent. The key to spiritual growth, the key to dexterity in the spirit, the key to commanding power with God is not just knowing what you should do, but staying there. Do it for as long as it would take until there is a manifestation. Hallelujah. Paul speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly, wholly, not half-heartedly. Give yourself wholly to them. He said that thy profiting will appear unto all. I give you a guarantee. God is going somewhere with your life. You may not see where he's going, but I know that he's taking you somewhere. He'll lead you and guide you. To the city up above, He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. He'll lead you and guide you to the city up above. He'll lead you and guide you to your place of destiny. There is a place for every one of us in this life. There is a place for us in destiny. Hallelujah. And Job said there is a path that no fowl knoweth. Although it flies, but it has not been able to see that path. He said the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. These are paths that only the Lord by wisdom has crafted out for himself. And if we stay with God, he will lead us through that path. I choose to sow in the spirit. I choose to sow to the spirit. I choose to walk with the spirit. The Bible says, surely there is an end. Everyone says, surely there is an end. So says the Bible, surely there is an end. 
And he says, thine expectation shall not be cut short. There is an end. There is an end. Learning continues forever, but a time will come, learning will coincide with results. Manifestation. And for some of us, we are this close to new seasons of breakthrough, of grace. Continue the giving. Continue the fasting. Continue the prayer. Continue building capacity. God is building you this much because that which is coming upon you is mighty. And so you must sustain the strength to carry it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it the desire of nations. The desire. What nations long for. What people kill for. What people go to the devil for. The desire of nations. When God puts it upon your life, you become the desire of nations. May that be so in the name of Jesus Christ. Gaining spiritual stature, part three. We'll finish it up today. There's just very little to finish. And then we'll pray. I, I just sense that we are flying in the spirit. I just sense that there is a spiritual... How do I describe what I'm feeling now? I just sense that there is there is there is an altitude in the spirit. Listen, I've been sensing this for a long time. That there is a height, there is a dimension in the spirit that God is taking us. It's so slow we are not noticing the shifts and the changes. Yet firm is lifting us. We are gaining wings. Wings that fly. A realm where certain challenges do not exist again. A realm of true liberty. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. We are soaring like the eagles. You may not see it. You may think you are still walking until he is done with you and he shows you the report card you find out that you stopped walking a long time ago. You took on a flight in the spirit. Hallelujah. We said how that there are three kinds of men according to scripture in the first part of this series. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14 that there is one who is called the natural man. Hallelujah. And we agree that the natural man is one who is unregenerate. Who is yet to encounter the Lord. The one you call a sinner, an unbeliever. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that he does not sustain the spiritual capacity to relate with spiritual things. He calls them foolishness. Because the quickening that must happen to his spirit man to begin to understand spiritual things has not yet happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says the gospel is the power of God that brings men unto salvation. And so he probably has not heard or acknowledged the lordship of Jesus Christ over his life. And as a result, he thinks purely sensually. His, his plane of interaction ends with his five senses. Hallelujah. He's a victim of all that he has known and he does not acknowledge God. And we agreed and we saw that sadly the eternal destiny of such a man is the lake of fire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Holy Spirit took us to another level as we began to pray and encourage ourselves and intercede for lost ones. And I hope that we are still um, passionate about souls. Daniel 12 tells us that they that be wise shall be like the firmaments of the heavens and they that turn many to righteousness like the brightness of the stars even forevermore. There is a reward for committing yourself to turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. And last week we considered the second kind of man and we said is the carnal man. The carnal man. The word carnal there means sensual, worldly. Sensual. 
Hallelujah. And we agree that the carnal man is saved. He has come to a point where he has met the Lord Jesus Christ. However, he is still a slave to the flesh and he is still a slave to its desires. He is still subject to the ways and the demands of the old man. So although he has given his life to Christ, his organ of understanding spiritual things has begun to be quickened, but he has not cooperated with the spirit. Hallelujah. He has not, he has refused to pay that price of alignment in the spirit. The price there is the price of spiritual alignment. To align himself so that he will come out of the grip of carnality. Hallelujah. And we said a few things that is, this is a very pathetic situation. We agreed that um, the issue with this nature is that it can rob the believer from experiencing the victory of the cross. Carnality is one of the reasons why many Christians see something in the Bible but it never becomes a reality over time in their life. And so they keep claiming it but there is not a manifestation because there are spiritual requirements to walk into the reality of this. One of the disasters of carnality is that it stops you, it robs you of experiencing the power of the cross, the saving power, the true freedom that the cross and the blood of Christ offers. Number two, we said that um, the believer in this condition will hardly experience sustained spiritual growth. Hallelujah. And this affects all kinds of people, preachers, ordinary people. You find out that today they are prayerful, tomorrow they are down. Today they are walking in holiness and righteousness, tomorrow they are down. Hallelujah. No sustained spiritual growth. It's a life of struggle. And so it's like you break through a path in the spirit and after a while you are down uh, to the dust again. Number three, we said that living a carnal life permits the operation demonic. It gives access to demonic influences over the believer's life. While it is true that one who is saved cannot be possessed because the Holy Spirit lives in him. There is a union between his spirit and that of the spirit of God. There is there is, there is a oneness. Hallelujah. However, his life, his faculty can be manipulated according to the counsel of darkness. And so although that man is born again, he may find himself being a victim of all kinds of things. It is at that realm where curses and yokes and spells and enchantments still exist. Praise the Lord. So although the person is born again and according to God's word, the Bible says you are a new creation in Christ. But he does not walk into the reality of that experience because flesh is the life of the dust. And Satan was told in Genesis that you will feed upon the dust. And so when that becomes your nature, you become accessible to demonic activities. Are we following? Verse 4, or sorry, point number 4. I said that in its worst state, the believer can fall out of grace and lose his salvation through idolatry and rebellion. I did disprove last time that the concept of once saved, forever saved is a fallacy. I'm sorry to say it. I wish it were not true, but it is the truth. The concept that once you are saved, you can do anything and nothing else changes it is not accurate. Hallelujah. I love those who brought this perspective to the body of Christ. I honor them. We honor their spiritual investments and that which they have brought to the body of Christ. But as we grow spiritually, there is need to adjust. I was speaking in a pastor's conference yesterday and I was telling them that one of the things we must sustain as men of God is the humility to adjust when greater light is open unto us. It is very embarrassing. There are many things I used to believe. I no longer believe them now. And there are many things I didn't used to believe. I probably would argue with them. But now they have become, they have been incorporated into my belief system. So realize that the life of a believer is a life of consistent repentance and alignment. This is the, this is the symbol. It is the signature that characterizes spiritual growth. That occasionally you will be required to repent and align. The word repent is not an ungodly word. It's not a word for sinners. To repent means to turn from a perspective and begin to see from another view. So we will need to repent and align ourselves. 
please let it not embarrass you if in the course of your Christian experience you find the need to adjust we all have at one point or the other believed certain things about God about men about ministry and as the word of God opens up realize and place your pos yourself in a position where you would say I am a student in the school of the spirit Isaiah when he saw the Lord he broke down there was nothing embarrassing about it there is still much more for us to see in the spirit and so if we camp around this that has become our experience then we may never grow we must sustain the humility to keep aligning that spiritual alignment is what opens up us to become um, uh, portals for for kingdom activities just like Mike shared, he said, let it be done in the earth, in this body. That this body will become a gate where spiritual things can find expression. Hallelujah. And then the last point we looked at, the issue with the carnal nature is that it stops the believer from being a true lampstand and a written epistle in his territory of influence. The Bible tells us again and again that the church and the believer as an individual entity, that we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. That means that our lives are supposed to be spiritual templates, mirrors, vistas for men to be able to see what God's life, that the reality of the divine life should be communicated accurately through our lives. But if we dwell in that realm of carnality, it can tamper with the quality of the, the, the reflection of Christ through us. And so you find out that men will look at us, but they will see darkly. We will not give an accurate representation. The word represent means to present him again. Represent. That we create an accurate portrait of what the divine life is. Hallelujah. I define the word carnal. And I told us that to be carnal means to be sensual, to be ruled by factors and agencies other than the spirit. It doesn't just mean five senses alone. Every time you are ruled and controlled by an agency that is outside of the Holy Ghost, you are carnal. Hallelujah. Whatever is the name of that agency, if it is outside of the Holy Ghost, it is called carnality. So to be carnal it's not just to be materialistic necessarily or to be ruled by your five human senses. No. That every time you subject yourself to an agency to influence and manipulate your life that is other than the spirit of God. According to scripture, you are called carnal. Are we blessed? And I helped us to define the word flesh in this context. And uh, I told us that flesh it's not body they are interchanged in scripture like in galatians 2 20 it talks about the flesh but it means our mortal body but flesh in this context has used when the bible is talking about the man of the spirit and the man of the flesh flesh i define it as the way of life i love the definition a way of life that is helplessly subject to the appetites the lusts and the desires of the old man helplessly subject this describes the experience of many believers in the body of Christ we are we are helplessly subject seemingly that's the reason why many believers cannot tame certain appetites of the flesh hallelujah according to first john chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17 the bible tells us love not the world we did examine that um, there are three dimensions of of carnality and three levels of being ruled by the flesh we said the first is the lust of the eyes we talked about the word lust lust means an affinity for something when the bible says love not the world it uses the greek word eros and is the word lust to develop an ungodly affinity for a thing hallelujah I told us that there are many words that are used. I'm just doing a quick recap for love. Hallelujah. Number one is, is filio. Filio is earthly love. 
the love between friends, husband and wife, the highest dimension of human love. Hallelujah. And then the Bible talks to us also that there is um, agape or agape. That's the love of God. Love that is not of this realm. Hallelujah. And then the third level is eros. Eros is, is immoral love. Love that is sponsored by lust. A demonic, ungodly, carnal affinity towards certain things. And the Bible says, love not the world. Remember the teaching? I'm emphasizing it because we can never have enough of it. Love not the world. The word is eros. Do not develop an ungodly affinity for this system. That means that there are many things in this world that can cause the believer to begin to develop an ungodly affinity. And the Bible categorizes them into three. The first is the lust of the what? The eyes. The lust of the eyes. An affinity that is sponsored by your vision. The things you can see creating an ungodly affinity. When you see a beautiful car, when you see a beautiful lady or a handsome guy, when you see a nice cloth, when you see all of these things, because of your eyes, if the Holy Spirit does not come to play a part to bring you out of that realm of carnality, you will find out that you become subject to an affinity that is beyond your power for such kinds of things. Are you following me now? Then the second is the lust of the flesh. An affinity that comes because of what your body wants. Food, immorality, and all kinds of things that are associated with the flesh. And I told us last week that it is good to pay attention to our bodies but not at the expense of our spiritual growth. Gluttony is one proof of carnality. An excessive um, uncontrollable affinity for food and this is um, among many other things uh, spiritual activities like fasting bring us to a place where food stays in its um, designated place in our lives and it doesn't go beyond the boundary hallelujah and then the cravings to satisfy our bodies through whatever means that's what has led people into acts like masturbation, acts like um, uh, pornography, and so on and so forth. The, the, that affinity to satisfy our body. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says the pride of life. That human desire to be in control outside of God. That human desire to receive earthly acknowledgement on grounds of our accolades and our fulfillment and achievements in life. It is a natural thing. Our natural disposition places us to be victims of this kind of nature. So we must be able to rise to a plane that is not natural. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I told us that the ultimate sign of carnality is uncontrolled lust. The ultimate sign. You can look at your life now and know to what degree you have attained spiritual stature. There is no confusion about it. God gave us exact templates. So you can know right now, every one of you listening to me inside and outside, you can know right now whether you are carnal or spiritual and if spiritual to what degree you have been able to gain stature in the spirit the test is very simple uncontrolled lust every time your appetites rule over you you are carnal every time your desire rules over you you see let me tell you something everything god gave man he gave man control over it praise the lord when the things that god gave you control over begins to control you it is sponsored by another strength that is not natural the carnal realm is the realm of the flesh that's where strongholds that's where mindsets mentalities and I tell you, it's a, it's a great gate for demonic activities in the life of the believer. 
why are we taking this series because you see if we want god to do business with us we must rise to a point where we lose affinity for the things of the flesh hallelujah and that's going to be my my the path i'll take tonight um i told us that to become a spiritual man there are two things number one is death to the flesh romans 13 verse 14 and i define that to die to the flesh means to rise to a spiritual state where your spirit your soul and your body can effortlessly withstand the pressures the lusts and the cravings of the flesh you are truly dead to the flesh when you rise to that plane in the spirit where both your spirit soul and body can effortlessly effortlessly take note of the word i told us yesterday um last week that um using willpower to fight the flesh is man's way of seeking divine help it doesn't work that way are you getting me i did give us an example last week that i may not be sleeping around but that is not necessarily a proof that i am free from the spirit of lust are you getting me I can be suffering the urge for lust. True freedom is when both the challenge and the urge for it leaves you. When it becomes effortless, you are truly free. Are we following now? There are many people in the body of Christ who have not done certain things. But they are struggling. That struggle was communicated by the apostle himself in chapter 7 of Romans. He began to communicate his personal frustration. And I told us that that is even more deadly than committing all of the acts of sin or gluttony and all of that praise the lord so if there is food for me to eat and i'm suffering from gluttony lost for food and i refuse to eat because i don't want a bad name that torture is worse than even um eating in itself you see that so God, God did not design us into a life of, of end. That, uh, I, I wanted to use the word endurance, but then in the context of um, struggle, that we are struggling and trying to use willpower. No, that's the way of the flesh. There is liberty, true liberty that comes when the spirit of the Christ finds expression in us. Hallelujah where you effortlessly rise beyond the pressures of the body where you can prepare a nice meal and you are about to eat it and the holy ghost says take a fast and at once it becomes effortless the ability to give up that desire for something superior is called spirituality hallelujah It's a position in the spirit and in your Christian experience where your craving for food, your craving for bodily satisfaction, pleasure and fame loses its power and dominion over you. At that point, you are dead to the flesh. Number two, becoming a spiritual man entails walking in the spirit. Galatians chapter um, 5 verse 16, the Bible says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not gratify the desires of the flesh hallelujah what does it mean to walk in the spirit it means to depend on the grace and power that is supplied by the person of the holy spirit within us to walk in the spirit is to depend on the grace and the power that he supplies listen to me brothers and sisters there is a grace and spiritual power that the holy spirit supplies to us and it can keep you it can take you to a point where you become flawless in your christian experience there is such an ability of the spirit and i showed us in jude 24 how that the bible says now unto him who is able to keep you from falling so there is an ability that is supplied by the agency of the spirit that can keep you from falling refuse that theology that um okay we can fall down and then we rise up just expect that one day. no 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 the path of the just is as a shining light 
It's not just a shining light automatically. It's a shining light because at every point, at every point in your life, there is a supply of the grace and the ability of the Spirit. So where, as an ordinary man, naturally, I'm a young man. Are you getting my point? Naturally, I'm a young man. I'm not married. The natural disposition in society is that I should have the normal, unusual affinity, maybe for ladies or something, and then go and sleep around and do this, and people say it happens. That is the natural state. If I depend on my strength, I will helplessly be a victim of that kind of life. It doesn't matter whether I'm a preacher or not. So realizing that I do not have the capacity to help myself, I tap into a higher supply of the Spirit. This is the true revelation of the grace of God. The supply of the power of the spirit. An agency beyond your human strength. So that what you should have been ordinarily subject to, there is grace. This is what the divine life is all about. We have no right to talk about the divine life when we are still under the elements of this life. When you experientially rise beyond certain limits, you prove to men here and now that the divine life is at work in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, we came back from, from Niger State this morning and um, the protocol, they were telling me a few things. They said I, I was sleeping in the car. They said one day they are going to bundle me and go and book a hotel and just throw me there and lock the place to force me to rest because it looks like I don't rest let me tell you I know it's good to rest but for me this scripture has become a reality if that same spirit that raised Christ see when the word of God becomes true it should become flesh and manifest bodily bodily if we all agree that there is a realm where sickness cannot touch you then that means that there is a plane in the spirit you see the trouble is we teach believers that it is possible but we do not tell them at which spiritual position that becomes a possibility it's not a possibility everywhere are you getting what i'm saying it's not a possibility everywhere how many of us know that the, in nigeria there is a level that you get to where you are not just given green passport there are other kinds of passports right there are diplomatic passports that grant you access without struggling here and there now until you get to certain realms if i just teach you that there is such a realm in nigeria and you carry your green passport and start running as though it's a diplomatic passport you'll be embarrassed for nothing and you would think i told a lie so it's not enough to tell believers the possibilities that are in the bible every possibility is activated at a certain spiritual frequency it's like your radio waves are you following me now as we are seated right now there are different waves they are operating at different frequency if you can tune in to certain frequencies some things become possible at once but if you do not have the capacity to tune to that spiritual frequency it will look as if it is a lie there is a realm brothers and sisters where a man can walk in purity in reality without struggle there is a realm where sickness can no longer find expression in your body it is not in every realm so the question is not to tell people the divine life is at work hallelujah you will be sick for nothing it is to keep eating of that tree of life those spiritual capsules that bring rejuvenation to your spirit man and as that is happening to you you are climbing a ladder in the spirit you will get to a point where you will walk experientially in these possibilities mm. my goodness jesus proved to us that certain things are possible to men he rose to a dimension where he could walk through walls that's the dimension we call immortality unfortunately there are many people that teach immortality but their concept of immortality is inaccurate immortality is the resultant effect of consistently eating of the tree of life when you keep eating of the tree of life death begins to be swallowed up by a, an activity and an agency of the spirit and if you do that for long enough a time will come that that proverb will be true in your life oh death where is your sting there is such a realm 
but the problem is that our level of spiritual metamorphosis is so slow that our lifetime is too short to bring us into that dimension hallelujah and so if we sustain the capacity in the spirit to accelerate our growth it is true that there is such a realm death is not life i mean eternal life is not life after death the true concept of eternal life is victory over death hallelujah i hope you know that god's original exit from this earth to heaven was not death is that true <laughs> no 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 death was not god's official pattern or pathway to exit man two men in scripture showed us god's original doorway for men to leave this realm two strange men one was called enoch the seventh man after creation he showed us what perfection in the spirit can be the second man was elijah the tishbite when the chariots of heaven came a literal whirlwind that interfaced the spiritual plane and this three-dimensional plane and took a man physically bodily elijah right now is with his body enoch is with his body see that these are possibilities that exist in the spirit but brothers and sisters let me tell you if all we do is to get born again and stop there yet we want the demands that do not exist in our current spiritual plane of existence see there are things we want but those things are only possible when we press through certain realms in the spirit you see why it is important to press so certain men of God can tell you for 10 years or 20 years I've not had cause to be sick in an area and you look and say it's a lie. No. It depends. They, are, they may be lying truly. Many of them are lying. But there are few that truly experientially in this body. See, I'd like you to look at your mortal body. This body can change. Listen to me. The spirit and the life that comes through the world creates an effect in this physical body. There is corruption in this body. The word corrupt means that you are subject to death. But there is a level. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. There is a level you can rise in the spirit. I am convinced that shortly before Jesus comes, there are few men that will touch that reality in the spirit. It was not just meant for Enoch and Elijah. Enoch and Elijah are two witnesses. They are the two witnesses that will return in the book of Revelation because it is appointed unto man the bible says to die once now but not in that context of being battered by accidents and so on and so forth but because they were in the law the dispensation of the law yet they did not taste death there was no salvation for them i hope you know oh yes they couldn't have been are you getting my point they never accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ and the divine life that comes with that decision. Yet, they crossed through a path in the spirit that escaped the grip of death. And the Bible says they will return because scriptures cannot be broken. So they are the two witnesses that will emerge in revelations. But the Bible says, I show you a mystery, not all will sleep. Hmm. I show you it's a mystery it's something you cannot understand until the holy spirit supplies accurate understanding i show you a mystery not everyone is on serious there are people who are pressing and see let me tell you i am convinced that when christ comes some people would have touched that realm because the bible tells us that the dead in christ will rise first and there are some people who will still be alive men who defy death the Hebrews 11 people. Mm, those who through faith have mastered the art of subduing kingdoms. The Bible says they shut the mouth of lions. That is the true concept of what we call Zoe. We teach a lot about Zoe. Everybody can squeeze in Greek and Hebrew words. The true concept of Zoe is the life of the spirit supplanted in your spirit moving through the realm of your faculties and gaining ascendance in your body that you dwell bodily in that glorified form the change that will happen at 
that rapture can start now. That's what I'm telling you. The change that happens at rapture is simply because the life that we have, this limitation, cannot cross beyond this three-dimensional realm. So, at, at that blast of the trumpet, it's not just a blast for nothing. As that trumpet comes, it comes with a sound, the same sound that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. And then this, our frail body, will now hear that word. Are you getting my point now? And so, if there are people that are on earth, for instance, at that time, who lost their legs, that sound that was prophetically spoken in Ezekiel 37, bones will be joined to bones. There will be no corruption again. And will be translated. The believer, among other things, aside from being an ambassador, is supposed to create a picture of the reality of the divine life at work in a man. Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. He said, great is the mystery of godliness. What is the mystery of godliness? That God can dwell in man and manifest himself bodily. My goodness. My goodness. My goodness. The divine life at work in you. Zoe. The life of God. So you can, you can hold someone this is normal hand but there is a translation in the spirit on the strength of a realm you occupy in the spirit something happens in your physical body hallelujah My, my, my desire is to change. My desire is that this metamorphosis keeps happening until we demonstrate to principalities and powers. See, that is the realm where men shoot you and the gun cannot come. We claim it. It's not claiming. It's a reward for pressing on with the spirit. At that realm, you understand the mystery of creation. You have captured the mystery of life. Death has no power over you. If you are still afraid of death, you have not entered that realm. Because when you enter that realm, you will see death. You will see it that this is a spirit that can be tamed. But how many of us are willing to contest? This is why if the devil finds out that eternally you will make it, he will do all within his power to keep you in the realm where everything that happens to natural men can happen to you. That is his own effort. To keep you from rising to that spiritual position in the carnal realm there is sickness in the carnal realm there is there are all kinds of things most of what we teach and we call new creation realities are realities that will be experienced only in this realm i'm talking about that's really what we have been taught as new creation reality because the confusion in the body and i want to correct it now is that most people have known all what they said should happen when you come in christ the experience of the christ life and the prophetic the the, the prophetic um, proclamation about you walking in the christ life that's what kenyon calls the vital side of redemption and the legal side of redemption we talk a lot about the i've studied the teachings of kenyon very carefully i've read almost all his books john lake touched a bit of this realm let me tell you something you will know when traces of immortality begins to be furnished in your spirit man you will know all of a sudden you will find out that certain things are no longer prevalent brothers and sisters it is at that realm if you do get to that realm no one will need to pray for you for any cause or any family ancestral anything the light that emits from that realm can break through every tribal barrier it is at this state yet many people come and say once you are in christ there's no cause there is there is a plane to which the grip of those ancestral claws can still hold you but when you rise when you truly rise you get to a point where you find out that nothing holds you again look at this look at this my goodness the bible tells us that 
Peter, Peter was in prison. Have you read that scripture? They were when they beheaded James, and I've shared with us why they beheaded James because Peter, James, and John were the pillars of the church, they were the prophetic people that were symbolized as faith, hope, and love. You see that? Uh huh. That the Bible says these three will remain, but the greatest is love. James was beheaded. When James was beheaded, it pleased Herod, it pleased the people and the spirit of the Antichrist. Because I hope you know these were the three that followed Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw something about a true spiritual man. It was an information that the remaining disciples did not have. And Satan beheaded James. When he beheaded James, they caught Peter. You see why they were going to kill Peter. And then the church started praying. Another revelation of the power of prayer. When the church started praying, watch what happens. An angel stepped into the prison and brought an atmosphere. And watch this. When he told Peter, stand up. When he told Peter, stand up. The same power that, that killed others and made them helpless still made a man alive. And the Bible says the chains on their own volition. This is the dimension I'm talking about. Where chains by themselves fall is not available in every realm please hear me it's not available in every realm if it's available in every realm what then is the reward of obedience and pressing into the spirit this is the realm that the apostle began to speak and said there remained a sabbath a rest for the people of god although they are the people of god that was god's original desire for the nation of israel in egypt but the bible says they could not enter that rest so that rest that means that office in the spirit is still available if you can occupy it he said there remained a rest for the people of god and we labor to enter that rest in the spirit we labor in the spirit to get to that point where we can speak over territories where the, the frequency of our voice has risen beyond the second heavens where you can speak and it can rattle the foundations of the spirit and we will get there the price is what we are doing the price is to keep at it sowing to the spirit building capacity in the spirit Brothers and sisters, this is why we are doing what we are doing. And if you do not have the revelation, spirituality will bore you. Because it will look like, what, where are we going with all this? What is the reward for pressing? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. How does the Holy Ghost make men spiritual? Let's, 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 let's discuss this very briefly. The Holy Spirit is the one who is vested with the responsibility of making men truly become spiritual. But how does he do it? What is the dynamics of that spiritual operation? How does it happen? We know that it happens, but how does it happen? How does that transformation, that shift in the spirit happen? The first way he operates is by breaking what the Bible calls the power of sin in your life. Breaking the power of sin over your life. Let me tell you something small about sin. Sin is not necessarily fornication and um, stealing and lying that's really not sin in its entire scope are you getting my point sin is an influence that comes as a result of a nature sin the true picture of sin is first a nature it's an influence that can come upon man by reason of the presence of a nature at work in him And then it begins to produce certain outworkings like lust, fornication, and so on and so forth. So, to try to solve the problem of sin by um, trying to stop stealing, 
or trying to stop sleeping around is not an ultimate solution this is the picture of what the bible calls the law that's the part of the law trying to use ordinances and not tapping to the power and the supply of the spirit for help because according to the life of a spiritual man your journey begins and continues and ends consistently with the supply of grace from the spirit at no point in your spiritual experience are you allowed to do anything without of the help of the holy spirit and that's the true concept of grace grace is only grace in your life because of what christ has done and the reward of what christ has done is the presence of the holy spirit to help you and there are two dimensions of grace the first is the only one the body of christ knows favor unmerited favor but there is grace as the supply of power to do power to do not just to receive power to do power to pass through a path that you cannot pass through paul began to lament and god said my grace is sufficient grace is also the name of a spiritual ability that helps men to do things supernaturally it doesn't mean that the fact that is grace it means you don't do anything no there are things you do but the energy that is supplied is not yours the power of sin the power of sin is what many believers must allow the holy spirit break in their life everyone say the power of sin the power of sin is what romans chapter 8 verse 1 calls the law of sin and death the word law there is not law like old testament the word law there is the word operation the operation of sin and death let's go to romans 8 verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in christ see this concept of in christ i don't even want to go into that it's another controversy let's leave it for another day because our theology of what we call in christ is not accurate believe me see if you love god and you truly want to grow if you listen to what i'm saying it makes a lot of spiritual sense it will now begin to give you and say ah i now see the reason why this and that and that and that is romans chapter 8 from verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation to who to who hold on who are the men in christ that's my first question because the bible says if you are in christ this law cannot operate in your life again what does it mean to be in christ that's a discussion for another day but i can tell you the truth we claim we are in christ yet this law is still at work in us that means god was saying something we do not understand i'm in trouble again to them which are in christ who are those in christ those born again those believers pastors church goers that's the theology that we make we, we must examine and that was part of the reasons why people like watchman me and the rest were greatly hated in their days because they came with ideologies and concepts that rattled what the church had agreed upon what does it mean to be in Christ? If any man is in Christ, he has become a new creation. In that plane, wherever that in Christ is, and whatever it means, all things have experientially passed. Hmm. The Bible says in Christ there is neither male nor female born nor free there are many things that the bible tells us in christ in christ in christ why did it not say well when paul started his preaching notice paul will say jesus christ jesus christ 
towards the end of Paul's ministry, he changed and started saying, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Ah. There was a revelation Paul saw. Why did he switch it? What was the revelation? Who is Christ? Is it Jesus? Is it the Holy Spirit or both of them? I'm wetting your spiritual appetite. I'm dusting the questions you used to ask that made you grow, that you stop asking and stop growing. Many of us, these are the questions we insisted. When you met a preacher and he said, eh, just this is it, you said, Kai, no, I don't exactly agree. And that question, the secret is to keep asking, not to criticize, but to contemplate in the secret place. What meaning these things? The Bible says the prophets kept contemplating, looking forward. They asked questions, they inquired. When you inquire of the Lord, you will find light. You will not just absorb anything. That a teaching has been prevalent does not mean that it sustains the spiritual accuracy. I truly believe with all my heart that if men like Papa Hagen were still alive, they would have brought certain strange dimensions of the spirit to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Kenneth Hagin and all the great men of God, we cherish them. But do not forget that knowledge stop in it didn't stop increasing at their death are you getting what i'm saying i read one of papa Hagin's books how that he said that um you know handkerchiefs and aprons and he gave a picture from that book like the anointing the only medium that the power of god can flow through is an handkerchief and apron because that's the only one in the bible but today we know better now don't criticize the man he's a man Kenneth Hagin did something to the body of Christ few men have been able to do. Yet, the least among us is still crippled. Paul, in his epistle, will write and say, even this I speak as a man. I have searched as to what the mind of the spirit is about this issue. And it's another spiritual calculus for another day. So I just speak as a man. If Paul were to return back to the earth, he will beg for all the scrolls he wrote and he, he will do major editings of many of the things we have swallowed religiously. <laughs> See some of you looking at me. It is the Bible, of course. See, there is a difference between the Bible and the Word of God. I hope you know that. Because when the apostles were alive, the word of God is what the Bible says, in the beginning there was the word. Was there Bible in the beginning? Answer me. But the Bible says in John 1 that the word of God began the beginning. Proof number one. Proof number two. In those days, men were not given access to what you call Bible. The writings of Isaiah, the prophets and the Pentateuch was kept in the temple. Like we do in Anglican church, first reading, second reading. When you come, they roll it and you read it and leave it there. They roll it back. Have you seen those, those scrolls? So they open it and they roll it and then they bow down and go and drop it back. Yet, Paul said the word of God is quick and powerful. What was his word of God? Are you seeing that the body of Christ truly needs a spiritual surgery? There is a need for an authentic apostolic and prophetic spirit to sit down. It's going to come with heavy persecution. Let me tell you. So if you want to be available to be used in editing these things, get set for heavy persecution. Because for some people, you are resetting their spiritual life to zero. You really believe that a man will sit down and watch you reset his spiritual life. He's going to be with him. You see, that's what Jesus did. When Jesus came and he started teaching, the scribes hated him. Because they had to lay down their scribehood and become followers of Jesus. And Nicodemus, while they were arguing in the open, Jesus will hate you. Nicodemus just turned and said, but what is all this? And in the night, Nicodemus sneaked and came and said, Master, we know. In other words, in the council, the truth about the matter is we know. We know you are a man sent from God for no man can do these things except. It's amazing. 
when you start walking in this light you will be criticized in the open and admired in the secret oh they will criticize you badly in the open but in the secret men will say what mean at these things what mystery sponsors this level of results and audacity that's why you must build capacity in the spirit to be trusted with the mysteries of the kingdom in the days to come many people who call themselves apostles read the bible it was one of the letter to the churches we have tested them that claim they are apostles and found them to be liars a true apostolic spirit is not in title hallelujah a true apostolic spirit is in the ability to carry the mysteries of christ to a generation the mysteries he said let a man account of us as apostles stewards of the mysteries of god the power of sin must be broken over your life for the power of sin to be broken over your life the only condition is your total surrender there is nothing else you can add to it the only condition for the power of sin to be truly broken in your life is surrender not just repentance you know what it means to surrender there are three steps to surrender number one you come to terms with the fact that you cannot help yourself two you come to terms with the fact that it will take another agency higher than you to help yourself three you yield to the ability of that greater supply to help you when that happens you have surrendered we sing a lot of things about surrender surrender is not the willingness to allow someone change you surrender is the ex allowing it happen is surrender so i come to a point in my life where i see that lord if it's just left for me oh this issue of immorality will continue till thy kingdom come if it's just left for me i like money if it's just left for me i like power if it's just left for me i like political positions however i acknowledge that I do not sustain the ability to deliver myself from this body of death. Paul calls it. Romans 7, please. Give us the last two verses. Romans 7. Paul is teaching us how to truly surrender. We thought that he was speaking negative. It's not negative confession. It's the pathway to true surrender. Romans 7. All of me. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give you. You're still looking for it? Just go to seven and scroll down. Last, last two verses or three. Look at what Paul is saying about himself. Let's look at 20, 23. Look at 23. But I see another law, Paulo, walking in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into what? This is an apostle in his full apostolic regalia. Yet he was crying that there was something that was going on in him. How many preachers can cry this today? Because we are embarrassed at it. And we claim like there is no need for any transformation. It's not true. The best of any man of God in this world right now. Still needs to keep rising. And we must come to a point where we are that humble. That when we teach members. We are not teaching as those who have arrived. It's only a steward. We are ushers in the spirit. Inviting men to join in a pursuit that we should be doing too. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin. He said that law is at work in his members. Like a cancer. Next verse. Paul needs help from God. And he says, oh wretched man that I am. In the body of Christ today we call it negative confession. Look at me. I can't be wretched. No. This is not what I'm saying. There is a state in the spirit. Isaiah did the same thing. He said, woe is me. Do you think these guys were idiots? These were men who were open to spiritual things. See, this teaching is not to help you criticize people. 
but his help is to help you discern the plane from which people are speaking when a man talks you look at the plane and then you know whether to argue or just keep quiet it's like when you are in primary school they teach you that one minus two when they say one minus two your answer is it cannot they mark you but when you get to secondary school they teach you something called number line they dare ask you one minus two you write it cannot you are repeating that class you see that so it is a reality that exists somewhere and when you say it cannot in the spirit don't criticize the person look at the plane in the days to come we will really know those who are in primary school in the spirit secondary school in the spirit fc in the spirit professors in the spirit look at me there are very few pastors that will qualify to be in the higher institutions of the spirit i am convinced that most of the people in the university of the spirit are quiet members that nobody knows these are men that have mastered the art of doing business with the spirit so while we are all making noise and gyrating with suit these men have taught spiritual things who shall deliver me that's what you must ask the first thing is an acknowledgement it's not necessarily to call yourself Rachel but to come to a point where you know that Joshua Selman you cannot help yourself you can stretch your ability to help yourself to its limit see listen to me what I am teaching you right now is what the Bible calls the gospel of grace this is the true picture of grace are you getting my point grace that is initiated by the power of the cross where a man comes to his life and sees your you see your limitation listen when you allow god to help you it does not mean you don't have any responsibility it is that at that point the best of your ability cannot help you so you are that you are relinquishing your ability does not mean you are relinquishing your responsibility are we getting the balance now the true picture of the grace of god lord I have come to a point where I cannot walk in this my human wisdom. Lord, I have come to a point where this issue of, of, of um, whatever challenge or whatever thing, I have come to a point where I need a supply of grace and strength that is beyond that of my human. That was what was communicated in that word. Oh, wretched man. Paul is saying, what is this frustration? So your prayer can be religious if it's not prayer that is out of a heart of surrender. You can pray because it's a spiritual formula you think can help you on its own. Are you getting my point? The state of surrender is the posture that attracts grace to a man's life. Grace does not just come because you think I need it or Jesus died. No, there is an exact condition for grace to begin to flow in your life. That requirement is what the Bible calls surrender. Please hear me. I hope you believe what I'm sharing with you. What is happening to you right now is what we call liberty in the spirit. Many of you will walk out of this meeting and you will see that chains have left you. Not just by jacking up and down and you will not need to tell lies again that I am standing whereas something is wrong. supply of the spirit grace grace so you are struggling with drunkenness and a man of god just tells you be born again say it's all right no it's not all right surrender is the requirement to access the door of grace that the bible says come boldly does not mean come with arrogance come realizing the fact that the mercy of jesus christ has created the platform for you to receive of that grace hallelujah and so he supplies that strength when you are surrendered and you come to him and you say lord i'm tired of carnality my prayer life is dead if you do not help i, I try to pray lord you know that within me go to verse 20 let's start from there let's see what paul is saying within me the bible says the spirit is willing but this body that holds the spirit has a law 
that is at work in it. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I. Okay, go to 18. There's something that I'm looking for. Can we hurry up? I want us to pray. Look at me. For I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. He said, for to will is present with me. Is that not the condition of many Christians? Have you seen people smoke and at the end they tell you honestly, I don't like this. Have you seen people like that? Have you seen even people go to the bed of fornication and a lady came to just talk to me, open up and when they finish whatever it is that they did, they had to pray there. They had to pray there. What does that tell you? That means that there is sincerity in their heart and that's a sign that you have met Jesus. Because if you have not met Jesus, that check of the spirit will not even be there. Are you getting what I'm saying, please? So men of God now tell people, you mean you slept with so, so and so person? And the person says, man of God, it's not like I don't love God. You see why a pastor can be sleeping with a lady? It's not like he's not born again. Are you getting what I'm saying? But Paul is saying to will that desire if it is from a human perspective I will never want to do anything bad however there is an influence beyond my will and so I must tap to a higher supply that's what we call grace for to will is present with me but he says how to perform that which is good that's where the ability does not come. So the true picture of what we call today the law is trying to do this second part. Now there is willingness. And you now say I'm using willpower. And there are many ways to use that willpower. You can use willpower. Come. If I'm supposed to hug this lady. Ah! No, 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 no. Why? That's, that's willpower. You see that? So you are feeling that. If I hug this lady right now. You are saying ah! This is carnality. That's not carnality. It's a sign that the true grace of God has not found expression. Bless you. Grace is an ability. I want your mindset about grace to change. Grace is not just speaking over your life and say you can pass. Uh -uh. There are two dimensions. There is a part of grace that does not require any doing on your part. It just requires an acknowledgement. The name of that acknowledgement is surrender. But there is another dimension of grace that empowers you to play your spiritual responsibility. If you get this, then your grace message is accurate and balanced. I plan for us to finish on time today. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. See, God is speaking to us tonight. Enough of struggling enough of struggling there is a fountain of true grace that can take you beyond the grip of the flesh mm. hear me there is a fountain of power supplied by the agency of the spirit that can make men live like gods upon the earth until that becomes a reality you will think everyone talking about it is lying hear me if i used to let me use sorry i keep using these things i use them because i'm speaking apostolically are you getting my point now it's not just to keep hammering our minds but let me use the concept of immorality because that's what is really prevalent assuming before i gave my life to jesus christ i used to sleep around are you getting my point that was normal question do you think if i get born again i will just forget those memories tell me the truth Two, if I used to watch pornography, I mean real watch pornography, and I get born again, do you think that your brain is just daft that those things will reset? Those pictures are still there. What makes them kill you is a power that activates them. That's what is called the power of sin. When the power of sin is broken, memories, pictures, and whatever loses its hold in other words it cannot push you to act out its desires again are you getting what i'm saying now so if i walk outside 
and I see a nude lady, the normal response as a man is to be um, emotionally attracted and want to sleep with her. But that only happens because the power of sin is like fertilizer. It fertilizes anything that comes upon it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The power of sin is not necessarily sin itself. The power of sin is a demonic agency that gives strength to the life of sin. So if I'm a drunkard, when the power of sin comes, that drunkenness becomes uncontrolled. That's why I can't stop it. <laughs> Are you getting my point? So it is true that many people who preach and say the solution to man's problem is that the power of sin be broken. But they didn't explain it to us well. They, are con they didn't make sin. They just said sin like stop fornication. Stop this. Sin is a very serious spiritual discussion. There is a power that sponsors it. When that power is broken over your life, the reality of the life of the Christ finds expression. So that you can see a lady that should physically lure you and want you to think some thoughts and you can appreciate her and say, wow, pretty lady, wonderful lady. And someone looks at you and says, is that all? Tell the truth, that's all. That is all. That's all because... See? <laughs> You're laughing. This is a possibility many people have not come into in the body of Christ. So, they even laugh at the possibility. Is it really, really possible? Even in Nigeria, it is possible. Even on campus, it is possible. Hallelujah. Trying to solve the sin problem... By religiously running away will not solve you can i'm sorry to say it and please don't think that i'm talking about churches and the rest but you can drive somebody out of your church for not dressing well but you won't drive the person from the street for not dressing well is that true you will see the exact thing you were running away from and your mind will help you remove the remaining part of the clothes so you see somebody half dressed i say i close it your mind and say thank you this is all i want you have you have now come into my office who is lying to who in the body of Christ? Tap into a higher supply. One day, we, a pretty lady was passing and I was looking at her. And one of my brothers looked at me and said, Ah, apostle. And I said, you are covering my view. <laughs> Let me look at... <laughs> you see, because to the pure, all things are pure. You have come to a point in the spirit where all things are truly pure. When last did you generously appreciate the lady sitting near you and you went back home and slept soundly? Just said, Kai, you are pretty goddess. Ah, God is at work. This is, this is a gift. And then the power of sin could not prevail in your life. Now the problem is once you see her because your mind was designed to snap, the power of sin looks for what to do with that picture and so he starts searching what do we do call her say something and because you are a slave to sin your body will act out the desire sponsored by that power say my dear can we meet in kaduna that's what happened you see that most of these big men they are slaves to sin they just see a lady pass you see you can know how much a man is helpless Some of us brothers were like that. But God is helping us. You can't see any lady and ah, just tap your brother. You have, it's not myself, it's not just to tell yourself to behave. It's to say, Lord, something must be broken tonight. Hallelujah. That power of sin. Broken, 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 broken. Hallelujah. Nine o'clock. When the power of sin is broken over your life, you will experience the same thing. Those of you who have seen people being delivered, right? At least you've seen people being prayed for here. And when you pray for them, after they get up, they tell you, ah, I feel light. I feel something has left me. That's exactly what happens when the power of sin is broken. All of a sudden, you will now see the true you and what you would have done naturally 
and what was sponsored by hell all of a sudden you say i always knew it i knew that i'm not just a womanizer there is something wicked now this is the real me i can now serve god in righteousness now i know that i don't just have you seen people who take beer they go to a beer parlor they take just two bottles and they are drunk that's the power of sin are you getting my point they they no matter what happens they must get there and when they take two bottles then they become victims of it they can sponsor someone else people can take even half crate but they must just go and respond to it how many of you have seen that when you are fasting you want to break that fast with anything even if it's sweet question will sweet satisfy you let's i mean uh what they call it vix if vix lemon plus on a normal day if you come to my house and i give you vix lemon plus on a tray won't you be angry i mean you came and said i'm hungry now you fasted till three o'clock and that that nature is fighting take anything take anything it's not just see let me tell you on a normal day there are days that you didn't eat food but you were not fasting nothing happened that's to tell you that normally you were just busy maybe you went to the office or for those of us working or you had lectures and you just found ah 5 30 and there is a test maybe by six and you still stayed you came back eight o'clock and you didn't even feel anything you drank tea and you said okay, tomorrow let me fast seven o'clock your body is shaking seven one hour after that declaration your body is saying uh -uh. let me round up this series with what i call the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of god's power and glory the keys to experiencing higher dimensions of god's power please take this seriously it will change your life those of us in ministry to change your ministry and it will change everything about you number one prayer and fasting i'm going to go straight to the point and not waste your time isaiah 40 and then luke chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 for time's sake i want us to pray let's see luke chapter 4 at least but write isaiah 40 and you read from verse maybe 27 down talks about they that wait upon the lord what does the bible say will happen he said they shall renew renew their strength they will mount up with wings as what eagles they will run and when humanly speaking they are supposed to be tired there is a higher supply that sustains them they will walk and they will not faint this is a possibility ordinarily when you walk you should be tired when you walk you should faint but when you tap into this supply of the spirit all of a sudden you will see that when men are getting tired you are still on the move there is a spiritual system that sustains continuity this is the secret to a consistent spiritual life so that issue of up and down you pray for eight hours today and then you can't pray for 12 minutes tomorrow something is wrong and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into where the wilderness next verse please being 40 days tempted of the devil and in those days he did eat nothing and when the days were were finished or were ended he was hungered now i'm just trying to tell you that after the baptism of jesus he went straight to go and fast and pray please and please i want you to learn this tonight if you want to step into higher levels of grace higher levels of spiritual dimension i read the story of a man who wanted to invoke the devil and see the devil and they gave him a condition in your called real story that he would fast for 11 months and in that 11 months he would not sleep in the afternoon and he will only break in the night if he could satisfy that condition he will invoke the devil and he did when he was six months he was tired one day and he forgot and he slept in the afternoon and he had to start again 
But after 11 months, Lucifer appeared to him. Because that, that fasting for that time is like you are pressing a spiritual coat. Suddenly, Lucifer appeared and said, you asked for it. I'm here. So what is the thing? And he started asking him a lot of questions. One year, Obama, what's his name? I can't remember now. Omar Bajesu or something like that. That's that man. This is what happens in the demonic realm. Right? When you fast and pray, that is when you will see the other dimension of grace I'm talking about. Not just that it is done for you, but your fasting and prayer now brings you to that spiritual alignment. Are you getting my point? Fasting and prayer, I've said it, fasting and prayer does not bring miracles. Fasting and, power and, and prayer does not in itself bring power. Fasting and prayer, as far as I'm concerned, solves one issue, unbelief. It brings your capacity to a point where you can understand and align appropriately so that spiritual things will begin to happen in your life. Verse 14. Let's rush to verse 14. So Jesus went to fast and pray. Not fast and sleep. Not fast and gist. Many of us starve what we call fasting. I'm telling you the truth from God's perspective. is hunger strike. He said, is this not a fast I have commanded? That means there is a kind of fast. You know, we do a lot of religious things and we want people to see. They say, come and eat. And I say, ah, ah, this is my 11th day. I've been fasting. Who cares? Just don't disturb us. If you are fasting, it's between you and God. Must you tell us it's 11 days? Um, well, when I get to the 15th day, I'll start taking water. If you like fast for one million days that's your cup of tea but i'm telling you that fasting is a personal affair is doing something to your spiritual man brothers and sisters if you do not fast there are some dimensions you may never enter spiritually now verse 14 it says and jesus returned after fasting what happened he returned in the power notice he was filled with the holy ghost but we did not see the power of the spirit but after fasting and praying, the power of the Spirit was at work. You see the difference? He had the presence of the Holy Ghost. But he probably would not do any signs and wonders. So the Bible says it this way, Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus first with the Holy Ghost at the baptism. Second, with power when he went to fast. The place of prayer and fasting is the place where you contact true spiritual power. Acts chapter 4 verse 31. Please let's rush. Acts 4 31. We saw this in the life of the apostles. So even in the New Testament. Fasting and prayer. Was part of the church. Let's look up. Um, okay well. Here just talks about prayer. But there's a place where they fasted and prayed. He said and when they had prayed. What happened? The place was shaken. It's as much as possible add your to your prayer fasting it's like adding fuel to fire your prayer life will be richer when you fast while they separated themselves and they prayed and fasted the holy ghost spoke to them fasting brings you to a point prayer and fasting brings you to a point where the voice of the spirit comes crystal clear upon your spirit man crystal clear the encumbrances that dwell in the realm of the flesh are now swallowed up because you see the flesh is only active when there is food there is a relationship between food and this realm and when it crosses its boundary it empowers the flesh the place were shaken and they were assembled together and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness fasting gives you boldness fasting and prayer gives you boldness let me tell you we have seen this in this house there are many people who came if you see somebody who is weak and if you are suffering from inferiority let me tell you the antidote pray go and join the prayer band for one month stretch in tongues every day and see how the spirit of boldness swallows up fear and timidity I've seen people who, the first time I met, some of them will not even be able to look at you. But after a season of prayer, 
that weight just breaks down because God helps you. Even our little children that you see here, look at the boldness in all of them because of the ministry of prayer. You do Bible study without prayer, forget about boldness. Let me guarantee you, forget about boldness. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I tell them if you are about starting a ministry start it first as a prayer meeting not a bible study fellowship I know it looks religious the word word pray you will never truly pray and forget the word of God let me tell you the truth if you make spiritual contact eventually you will stop and consider the word but you can sit down with tea and, and coffee and say okay let's consider now the book of Colossians and somebody is just snoring the pathway to death and a time will come where once there is no activity of the spirit, the flesh will start coming in. You see, the only one who will share, Benga, we are tired of your face. Oh, ah, give Lillian flesh. Look at a church that prays. They are men of power. Look at a ministry that prays. Look at a family that prays. There are some family that some families that really pray. Thank God for some of our mothers. No matter how tired you are, five o'clock, you're already hearing worship in the parlor. The meaning of that is wake up. And when you were growing up, some of us insulted our parents because we did not understand. Watch this. Today you thank God because there are some histories that will never be associated with your life. Not because you were nice in yourself. Prayer build you out. He said, watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. Brothers, you see the key? watch and pray so that you will not be sitting down somebody tells you let's go and visit one of my friends the moment you are going police will just put you inside black maria and say let's go they did stealing around he said no no i'm just coming out they say you go and explain it in the station watch and pray it gives you discernment how many people have been jailed for doing nothing because they could not walk circumspectly Prayer and fasting. One key that will bring heaven's dimension to operate in your life. There is no exact formula for praying and fasting. But I encourage people generally, it is my personal spiritual growth principle that your prayer and fasting life should be at least, at least once in for a start let's say once in two weeks i fast at least once in a week at least and that's all right you don't need to fast six times in seven days not necessarily if you're on a program that's okay but incorporate it not as one religious thing after you fast for 21 days you die for the remaining part of the year no let it be part of your spiritual growth Please, just do what I'm telling you. Even if it is religiously, just do it. And see what happens to your spirit now. Hallelujah. At least once a week. Huh? You can use the day you are sure you won't cook well. Or where there's no nice food. If you fast on Sunday, you are looking for trouble. If God instructs you, fast. Otherwise, you can... And don't just fast the day when you, are, you want to sleep. And then you fast and sleep. And then it just so happens that you woke up and it was 4.30. And then you just prayed a little and still played koinonia message and slept. And you woke up 5 minutes to 6. You started peeling orange, banana and the rest. You didn't fast accurately. You won't maximize the spiritual blessings. Praise the Lord. You fasted and the whole day you were cooking. What you eat in the evening. That's not fast. It's not fast. Number two. Very rich and consistent word study life. You want the glory of God to be multiplied upon your life. You must have a robust, rich and consistent word study life. Rich what study life let me encourage everyone here you can meet media i think they have i listen to the whole bible um every month i may not be able to read it 
Do you know that you can read one book in, in 15 minutes? I mean, you can listen odd on audio. Are you getting my point? The truth is, the probability for you to wake up every morning and do devotionals from 5 to 8 is almost zero. Except you want to become an irresponsible worker in your place of work. If I employ you and you come back by 12 and I ask you what you were doing, you say, I was touching heaven. You are out. You are out. Now, there are many believers. Let me balance this. There are many believers that use spirituality to refuse to be productive. They employed you to come and walk. You prayed from 5 till 11. It is good, but you are not wise. So create a system just the same way you read your book and you study in school. I don't do that. I'm telling you the truth. I don't have that time every day at a particular time to study as much as I want. And so I have all kinds of systems that are put in place. Hallelujah. There are times that I'm traveling and the time to travel is 5 a.m. in the morning. Are, are you getting my point now? You can sit down and miss your flight and tell them <laughs> I'm, I'm a pastor. That's your cup of tea. You're a pastor, buy your jet. Or buy your, your, your plane. Or, or trust God to move like Philip. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are times that there are certain things in your life that are time tagged. I wake up that and sometimes I wake up maybe 15 minutes to 5. What can you really do in 15 minutes? I'm just bathing and praying in tongues. And quickly I'm playing. I have audio Bible. Everyone say audio Bible. It's a big blessing that can transform your life. I'm giving you a secret. I believe that media has audio Bible. It's free. Go and get it. Buy a flash. Buy all of this. Buy a bigger memory card. Remove nonsense from your phone and add direct Bible. Praise the Lord. And you are listening to it. Sometimes try listening to it and sleep. You will find out that while your spirit is sleeping, it's picking the signals of that scripture. How many of you listen to messages and you know while you are sleeping, the message is still playing? You are well aware. Let me tell you, that thing is not little. There is a mighty level of translation happening. Because at that point, your body is sleeping. The biggest problem of your spiritual growth is asleep. And so the Holy Ghost can quickly maximize that opportunity and cover ground before you wake up. I'm, I'm telling you this. Oh yes, I'm telling you this. That's why it is while men sleep that the devil comes to plant tears. Not while men are awake. While men sleep. There is a mystery of sleep. As you sleep, most times, I don't just sleep silent. It doesn't mean that if you have roommates, let me balance it now. You just get a little speaker and just put something and you disturb people. God gave us, he brought technology to help us grow. Get an earphone. A rich word study life. The Bible on the go. The Bible on the go. There are times that all these short, short chapters, Jude, James, you can just combine all of them. Huh? And within an hour, you have listened. Faith comes by hearing. Literally comes by hearing. You can use devotionals. Devotionals. It may not be the ultimate source of your spiritual growth, but please don't trivialize devotionals. It's a good way of starting. There are many ministries that have devotionals. Many ministries. Some of our churches have it. Buy. Humble yourself and, and, and let it direct and guide you. Number three. There are special Bibles that have Bible study plans. Is that true? God has helped a lot of people and they have put different Bible study plans. One year plan, two year plan. You can, you can take advantage of it. Whatever you will do, you must design a systemic way of study consistently. I study as the spirit leads will not help you. It's not even the spirit that is leading to that kind of confusion. So the day you just feel like, you say, okay, where do I study now? You know, let me tell you, this flesh is a dangerous thing. You turn to the book of Matthew, nothing, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 12, what will I now study? You open again Leviticus, 
you know all these kinds of things you open to the gospel you open to revelation you are afraid you close it back and at the end of it you don't study anything constructively you must study and then beyond study you must allow the word of god to grow in you it's not enough just to study you must live by the principles of the word number three okay let me give you a scripture for the second timothy chapter three second timothy chapter three from verse one to seventeen the verse of emphasis is from fourteen to seventeen second timothy chapter three from verse one but specifically from verse fourteen to seventeen you can also back up your word study life with rich christian materials oga jordan is there jordan bookstore is open there are all kinds of rich books that can help to back you up carry five thousand carry ten thousand if you can eat food of ten thousand and you cannot buy a spiritual material of ten thousand you are the second man we are talking about that's carnality hallelujah number three fellowship with the spirit through intense worship you want to experience heaven fellowship with the spirit through worship by worship i mean employing the agency of music listen you will never encounter the glory of god if you ignore the place of worship in your life that's why sometimes you see that they are playing this and well it's not just that we want to make noise it's an atmosphere i preached a message years ago called the law of atmosphere when you create the atmosphere for the holy ghost to come you will experience his presence mightily hallelujah worship my my phones are full of all kinds of worship songs some i'm just sitting and i just go on youtube the best worship songs and i look for them i download them i convert them to mp3s straight to my phone and i just lie down and sometimes especially those times when there's no light when your eyes cannot see anything you just play that worship song and you are lost you are in another realm hallelujah and all of a sudden you literally begin to sense the shekinah presence of god in your room when you keep doing that eventually your room becomes an altar an altar is a place where consistent sacrifice is made your room becomes a portal hallelujah if you plan to build create a section in your room and call it your altar with god the threshing floor hmm. some people is the bathroom your toilet and, and trust me it's a good idea for as long as he's building your spiritual life at least nobody will harass you there and you just lock the place and you are lost in worship it's not like you are using yourself you just need some time for yourself some of us the garage that they are not using you just find one old mattress and throw down there and you lie down sweet spirit i submit to you and you are worshiping and you are just praying in tongues and I tell you, if you go online, there are all kinds of worship. There, there's jazz worship. Strong, prophetic jazz worship. No words. Your tongues will be the words. There are instrumentations. Like this. Just play. And guys, you can do something like this and package it. Why not? Do something like that to help the body of Christ. No ministry. You are just creative. You are contributing to the body of Christ. And you will be blessed and rewarded for it. Both financially and otherwise. That's an idea God is giving someone. Imagine that you have this that you are hearing. Take it to your room. It says, oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul longs for you. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Take your experience of the sanctuary to your secret place. And you are just worshiping. Ah, hello and you invite your husband your wife let the children sleep in the presence of god see if you are married here don't leave your children behind 
while you are worshipping, drag them. The Bible said, train, not discuss. Train, drag them. Come and put the mattress. Let them sleep in the glory. Eli was, um, Samuel was sleeping close to the ark, but he still had the voice of God. At least sleep, but sleep close to the ark. Some of our little ones are sleeping now. They are sleeping in the presence of God. Let them remain there. You don't lose in the presence of God. Is God helping someone here? All of a sudden you find out that there are times you may not have the grace to pray but there is the grace to worship. Switch from there. And you're just singing. And sometimes it may just be one song. Has that happened to you? Any other song you raise, your spirit will reject it. Because that one song is the communication of what the spirit is doing in your life at that moment. It could even just be a phrase. Ah, Elohim. Any other song will not connect with your spirit. Ah, and five minutes turns to ten minutes. And there is a supply of strength. After 10 minutes, you thought you would be tired. But right now, you have broken the barrier. 30 minutes, you are still worshipping. While you are worshipping, your body is telling you all kinds of nonsense. Are you sure you are not busy? You know you have lecture. Ah, Elohim. While that is happening, you are just talking. And the flesh is, the flesh is reacting to the worship. Keep worshipping. Keep worshipping. That's why people get tired easily in church. The flesh is fighting. Fighting your rise into a realm. The secret is to keep that body there. Keep the body in the glory. And it will start changing. A time will come like you tame a horse. The body will submit to the dealings of the spirit. All of a sudden while you are worshipping. At a point you will find out. Scriptures begin to come. Mm, His majesty has stepped in. Scriptures. All of a sudden, God begins to speak to you. Some of us in the midst of that worship, when it gets deep, the spirit of prophecy oftentimes initiates the coming of the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, prophecy comes and you begin to prophesy. You are just praying in tongues. You are in the presence alone with him. All of a sudden, you will start answering your own questions by yourself. Another spirit, the spirit of Christ, has taken over. You are praying. All of a sudden, you find out the pain is gone. Completely gone. You are praying. All of a sudden, you find out that you could not sleep because you saw seven carryovers and you say what have I been doing in school and in that presence and the scripture starts coming fear not I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine when you walk through the water I will be with you through the river it will not consume you when you walk through the fire all of a sudden courage is arising you have exams but you've not read anything but in the glory you're worshipping you are a man of God. You are preparing for your meeting. And there is nothing to do. See, this is how I prepare for koinonia. Those who know me, especially for the miracle service. Ah! I come and I lie down flat. And there is heavy worship. Well selected. Selected by spiritual wisdom. And I just play it. And I increase the volume enough to frustrate my body. And I lie down there. And as the glory comes... All of a sudden, visions are open. And sometimes I'm seeing the things that will happen in the meeting. Let me stop there. Fellowship with the Spirit in the place of worship. The Holy Ghost loves singing. When you sing to Him, whether in the Spirit or in understanding, you attract His presence. Notice every man of God that moves heavily in the anointing. Whether he has a good voice or not, there is an affinity to music and deep worship. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will serve the lion. I will serve the lamb. The last point before we pray. 
my goodness what is this that I'm seeing in the spirit I'm literally smelling a fragrance in the spirit literally literally I'm smelling a fragrance with my physical nostrils when you begin to smell things in the spirit it is called the spirit of discernment there's no time to teach you this but it is a manifestation of the spirit of discernment there are times many of you begin to pray and as you go deep you start smelling things scents in the spirit these were ancient davidic patterns of worship the mysteries of the keys of david spiritual formulas that were used to invoke the presence of god Number four, the sacrifice of a pure and a holy life. The sacrifice of a pure and a holy life. You want to see heavy dimensions of God's power and glory. You cannot downplay the place of true holiness. Colossians chapter 3 verse 2. By sacrifice there are certain things you will even need to cut they may not be wrong but you may have to cut them movies associations there are some things you may have to cut for the excellency of that which you want to gain in the spirit you cannot eat your cake and have it in the spirit believe me okay let me give you two more scriptures first thessalonians 5 22. first thessalonians 5 22. hurry up psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he that has clean hands and a pure heart and then second corinthians 6 verse 7 all these scriptures point towards the fact that a life of purity and holiness has a lot to do with the presence of God resting and remaining upon your life the Bible says come out from among them and be ye separate touch not the unclean thing you must create boundaries in your life brothers and sisters do these four things again and again in your life and watch a giant in the spirit arise i don't care what the limitations are now fast and pray without compromise invest quality materials invest in the world invest in quality materials concordances in your uh, uh, bible concordances and so on and so forth takes bible at least if you can lay your hands on get rich spiritual materials number three fellowship with the spirit in the place of worship you can buy a keyboard buy a keyboard or buy juice five for life come and give um what's his name timmy i almost said ayo buy five for life and give to me and say to me just play this for me while i record for 30 minutes here is the honorarium for investing your gift in my spiritual growth and you're just playing it and soaking in the spirit hallelujah there's someone that has been on my mind even while i was traveling back today i was thinking about the person he came all the way from i think yobe Saleh. where is he please come the lord will begin with you tonight Please ushers, position yourself inside and outside because there will be a rain in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. You will be set free. Where did you come from? Please, technical, can you help us? 
Where did you come from? Bauchi, Bauchi State. Okay, from Bauchi. Yes. I want you to know that God will do a miracle in your life. Amen. You believe that? Yes, I believe. You came full of faith. Yes. The Lord will set you free right now. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That devil. Come out of him right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Just breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. I set you free right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. Please. I want to see those who have heart conditions. You came here. Hear me outside, please. We don't have time to waste. We are not going to have to mention cases individually. But when, when we call your case, please run out. We are going to pray and see as far as God wants to finish fast so that we will end quickly. Heart conditions. Leave your seat and come out here quickly. Either a hole in the heart or an abnormal heart formation. Quickly, quickly, appreciate them as they line up here. Ushers coordinate them. Heart conditions. Please come and line up here quickly. That devil is a liar. Heart condition. Growing up, they told you you have a heart condition. Come out and line up here. Come out and line up here. No matter how old you are or how young you are. Please line up, line up, straight line. Hera ba da 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 ba. Rakata ba da da ba. Line up, usher, direct them, help them. Hallelujah. As you're standing here, I'd like you to wait by by to it, because I know the unction of the Spirit is here. God will set you free. Baba, God will set you free, sir, and everyone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, sirs, we'll minister quickly. We'll just minister to them. Hallelujah. Praise God. I tell you, there is an unusual unction in this place. As hands are laid on you. Hallelujah. Return back thanking the Lord and check. If you are still seated in the crowd and you know you have a heart condition, don't sit back there. God wants to change your story. Hallelujah. There's someone who has an unusual palpitation. I don't know what it is. You, the way you, the way you breathe. Sometimes it's literally holding you and choking you. You are the one. Look at me. Because it's a devil of darkness. Your own is not just sickness. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil of darkness. Let her go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let her go. Go, 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 go. Right, devil of darkness, come out, come out, come out of her now. Come out of her now. In the name of Jesus, out of her. Come, my sister, you too. Come. Some of you that are standing. As hands are laid, you will find out that it wasn't sickness. My dear, God will set you free right now. Because your own is an oppression. Look at me. Are you, are you listening to me? There is a devil that has oppressed this girl. You will go. 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 Go in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Greater than any other name. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing a dark object coming out of you. Come out of her now. Sister, look at me. I'll pray for you. God will set you free. You believe that? Now, thou foul devil, let this girl go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Go! 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 Let her go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say, you won't hide. Come on, I see you in the spirit. Go out of her in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
John Capitalist, Minister Jakes, Bishop. Let's begin to, as they lay hands, they will speak to your life. Don't just think they are laying hands. Hallelujah. Please stand. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. As hands are laid, begin to pray while you're standing. Out of him now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed now. I curse that devil of darkness. Go. 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 Be healed in the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Out of her. Right, devil of darkness. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Let him go. Let him go now. Let him go. Let him go. Go. Be healed. Sister, I curse that devil. Because I also see oppression in your sleep. That demon of darkness. Go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be made whole right now. Be made whole. Oh, God is not done with you. God is not done with you. Be healed in the name of Jesus. As you go back to your seat, check yourself. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come out of her now. Come out of her. Come out of her. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her right now. In the name of Jesus. What's wrong? Be made free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Set you free. Set free right now. From every oppression. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, only outside, not inside. All of you outside, lift your hands. Not those inside. Please, those inside. Lift your hands, those outside. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. The fire of God will terminate the works of darkness. So many of you are under influences of the devil. Hallelujah. Only those outside. At the count of three, as you shout, the power of God comes upon you. One. Two, three. Let the fire fall. I curse devils. I curse demons. Go, go, go. Bring them in, ushers. Go, go. Let the fire fall. Bring them in. Bring them in. The fire fall all across the building. Outside. All across. Fire is falling. Those outside. One more time. Those outside shout Jesus. Angels, move, move across the crowd, move, 
over your life. Two ladies sitting in the same row. Look at me. We've not finished so. We've not finished. If it's possible. If it's possible. The ministers are going to separate themselves into three and walk across the crowd outside no devil will survive today brother i see a serpent not a man come out of him now out of him now a devil of darkness come out of him come out of him i see a snake not a man come out of him come out of him come out of him Fire I'm seeing a snake, not a human being. You see the way he's behaving? Look at what he's doing. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Come out of him. In the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Leave him, leave him, go. Go, go, go. As you touch me, you touch fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Come out of him. He must be free. Come out of him. Come out of him now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon me. Out, out, out. Out, out. Out. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Hold on. I set you free. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Leave him. Look at, he's free. Look up. Look at this gentleman. Someone who came oppressed of the devil. 
Brother, you are free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pick him up. Stand up, my brother. Look at, see, he's even surprised. Look at. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, look at me. Look at me. Do you know when you came out here? Where were you? You came outside. Help me with the mic. What's your name? Samuel. Eh? Samuel. Where are you coming from? Danaka. Look at this guy. Outside. He doesn't even know that he's here. Look at him surprised, looking at everybody. The Lord perfect you and set you free. Where was the lady you were praying for? Pray, this lady. See, I see an old woman. That's what I'm seeing. Turn this lady. I see a very old woman. Come on now. Come out of her. Come out of her. You're not done. Come out of her. Come out now. She laid down as though it's done. You are not done. You are spiritual people here. Out of her now. Out of her by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come out of her right now. That foul devil. In Jesus' name. Leave her alone. She's free. Look at. What's wrong with this woman? Who brought her? Please, if you brought someone, make sure you stand close to the person. Who brought mama? Who are you? Come. Well done. What's her name? Lydia. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past three years now. For the past three years. Look at. She had she had what? Dislocation on her shoulder. She could Since when? Mama, she can she talk? Yes, I can. Mama, how are you? I'm well. Well done, eh? What's the issue? Oh, this hand now is dislocated. Yes, it was since December last year. December? Uh, that I went to toilet on my way coming back. Something you see? From my you, face always, like you always know the signature of Satan when you see it. I'm not so, teaching you to be demon conscious. I'm back, just I telling just you that. Myself on the ground. You did what? I said on my way coming back. I found my on the way from the toilet. Yes. How old are you, mama? I'm 51. 51. I found myself sitting on the ground. You not found that, yourself sitting on the ground. I, that, I don't know how it, uh, it happened. Not that I fell down flat. So. And, okay, come. You are her daughter. Let, let her talk. I was taken to a student that is not stroke. Because immediately it happened. My left hand and left leg seized. Your left leg right now is not moving. No, it's moving. What of your right hand? The what right, is wrong with it? No, nothing happened. It's only the left leg and the left hand that seized immediately. Then I was rushed to the hospital. So the bleeding will stop. No, and no. The case of the bleeding is different from. I was taken to the hospital that uh, it was cancer of the womb. Cancer of the womb. Yes. You still have it. Yes. It's going to go. This is what I'm so, saying. That it was not stroke, that it was partial stroke. It was what? Partial stroke. Partial stroke. Then the following day, I was in the hospital for two weeks. I, I, I told them, the doctor, that I want him to discharge me. I want to go for prayer. So I went to, for prayer in Nosarawa State. So the, the following day, in, in the prayer house, it's time for you to go. Go, 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 go. Out of her now. Out of her now. Now in the name of Jesus. That devil. Out of her now. Fire on you. Fire on you. In the name of Jesus. Fire upon you. Go, go, go. Go. Sorry, mama. So I moved my leg. So I went. Okay, what, what, is, what, okay, so what is wrong with you right now? What, what did no, you come with it's right the now? Cancer of the womb. Cancer it's of the womb. We're bleeding. Then, your the, hand. The hand. These are the two conditions. Now that I fell down flat, so I discovered that I have dislocation on my shoulder. So, okay, it's all right. The hand has been fixed locally, but up to now I couldn't move the hand. But I will pray for you. I'll pray for you. Yes. All right. Can you feel my hands? Can you feel my hands? Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. My God. 
Do wonders in this hand right now. In the name of Jesus. Perfect this hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That devil of darkness, your hold is taken from my hands. In the name of Jesus. 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 fingers yes. every pain go I command it to go you are of the spirit of darkness I challenge you try lifting it up lift both of your hands up try it just try lifting your hands up can you try lifting it up in the name of Jesus you feel pains you feel pains where your shoulder By the power of the Holy Spirit. Begin to move it more. In the name of Jesus, begin to move it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. Start moving it. In the name of Jesus, I cast that devil. I cast that devil. Can you wind your hand? Try and wind this hand. Just look at me. that coughs out blood I'm seeing someone that coughs out blood you cough all the time you cough out blood please hurry up you cough out blood literally who is the person inside are they hearing me outside quickly if you identify that person let the person come you cough out blood literally come out Please clear the way for them. Ah, look at oppression. This is what I'm seeing. Come on now, get out of her. Out of her now. Out of her now. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Out of her now. Out of her, thou devil of darkness. I curse you by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. only this lady but the members of her family have been oppressed lay your hands on her chest in the name of Jesus I curse that power of darkness be free totally now in the name of Jesus since when for the past two weeks, for the past two weeks. have you gone to the hospital can I pray for you? You believe Jesus will lay your hands on your chest. You will feel a fiery sensation upon your chest right now. Now you hear my voice. Let her go. Go! Go! Hallelujah. Those of you inside, lift your hands. I'm going to ask the cymbal to clash 
and the string play listen when that happens the fire of the spirit will move across anyone here under any oppression of darkness you must go this is not a negotiation hallelujah lift your hands at the count of three begin to clash the cymbal one two three Kashatabata. go 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 Go, 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 I stretch my hand by the power of the spirit. Devils go. Satan be exposed. Satan be exposed. For this purpose was the Son of God. Satan be exposed. Light shine. I release fire. 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 fire upon this congregation. Fire. 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 Fire upon you. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. Fire. 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 You can't stand it. No devil can stand it. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire is burning. The fire is burning. You can't stand it. Satan, go, go. It's time for God's people to go. It's time for destinies to be open. It's time for what has made you to cry to end. Bring them out. Hey, I see you in the spirit. Leave her. Leave her. Go. 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 I see you in the spirit. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are free in Jesus' name.
bring me a mic. I do these things to teach you a lesson. Madam, stand up. No, 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 not her. Not her. You are a devil of darkness. For how do you think you can hide in the presence of God's light? Look at me. Bring the mic for me. You are not gone completely, oh. You are a devil of darkness. Out of her now. On your mark, get set, go. Go, 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 go. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. As you touch me, you touch fire. As you touch me, you touch the fire of the spirit. It make it this out of her now. Out, 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 out. Come out of her now. She's free. In the name of Jesus. Madam, it will not stand fire from my hands to your head. If I be a servant of God, you stand around fire. In the name of Jesus, come out of her. This woman's destiny has been tied down. Lord, who is the person? Let the fire of God catch up with the person right now. God shows me this room. There's one person. My hands. Let the fire of the spirit separate that person. Now, 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 now. Stand up, madam. Don't feel embarrassed. Calm down. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I want you to look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. See, this woman has suffered. You just see someone walking. Things are not going right. People speak all kinds of grammar and Satan is advancing. Mama, please come. Jangfa is going to speak to you. I sense, please, Mama. You are free. Take her outside. I see her coughing, whatever. Please take her outside for God's sake so we don't litter this place. Take her outside. I don't know if it's poison or whatever it is that she took. Take her outside. You're still not out. Go out, go out, go out now. Out, go out. Go out in the name of Jesus. Go out of her. Go out of her. Come. Place your hand on this lady's chest. Out of her. Come out of her now. I release fire upon you. Foul devil. Out of her. Patata tata da kapa. Rakata posa tali. Rekete kete kete. Le gronto zopo rotata. Riata la kosiaba. Alright, your reign in this life is over. On your mark, set, go. 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 Go, 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 you can't stand it, go, go, go. I prophesy to you today, after today, your life will begin to move as if Satan does not exist.
Are you listening to me? Every oppression, those outside hear me. Every oppression challenging your family through the greatness of the power that is in the name of Jesus, that challenge will bow. Don't let her go. Bring her back. Come, sweetheart. Look at me. Just look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Just keep looking. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I'm seeing your father's face on your face. Look at my eyes. Just look. For she will go free. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Right now, you and the spirit of death upon her get lost. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. Up your heads, O oh ye gates. Be ye lifted, O oh ye ancient doors. And the King of Glory will come in. In Jesus' name. You're free. Come, Mama. Bring that lady who is falling. See, tonight, many of you, you will go back rejoicing. He who has the Son, has it all. We have the Son, so we have it Lay your hands on her stomach. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus. What is it? Cancer. Who said so? The doctors. Lay your hands there. Kisan, interpreter. Selina. Where is she? She's walking. Tell her Jesus. Okay. Okay. Tell her Jesus Christ is going to heal her right now. See, she's crying. See. Tell her Jesus will heal her now. Is she looking at you? Look at her. Tell her, Mama. Jesus will heal you. Look at, look at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I can't sleep. It's the night. I can't breathe. Look at this. This is somebody's mother. This is somebody's mother. of you outside, I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. There is someone I need in this room. The devil has oppressed you. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, come out. Two of you, all of you in this room, lift your hands. That devil is a liar. As I, I shout the name of Jesus, 
the fire of God will come. People, please let me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release fire right now. My Father, locate those two people right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God fall, fall, fall. Two of them, two of them. There's one already, two of them. Fall. Satoya. Fall. 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 Sister, tonight is your night of salvation. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come up. Come out of her. Shatata. Out of them. 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 Bring them in. He who has the son. See, none of you will go back the same. Are you hearing me? None of you will go back. Who is Grace here? Who is by the name Grace? You are standing here. Your name is Grace. Who is Grace? Come in, sir. He who has the son. Has eternal life. We have the Son, so we have eternal life. Time is up, thou foul devil. Let this guy go. Go, fire on you, fire upon you. That devil of oppression, that devil, leave him now. Come out of him. 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 Now fire upon you. Fire. Let him go. Let him go. Come out of him. Come out of him. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of you are not done. Out, out, out until he's completely free. Out. Little girl, be free. I separate you with this spirit. Go. 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 Time up. Time up. This lady is heavily oppressed. Out of her. Out devil of darkness. You came for koinonia. You're welcome. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Stand up, pick him up. Fire on you right now. It's time. It's time. It's time. You must go. Go. Bring him. You must go. This lady has been so tight. Now, listen. I need to explain something to you. Please follow me. It's not the people. Listen. It doesn't mean they are possessed with demons. Are you listening to me? So get that clear so that you don't carry your big mouth and start talking stories around. There are three levels of manifestation of Satan. Some of them are acutely possessed with demons. Some of them, devils influence their lives and destinies. So the fact that they are manifesting like they are possessed does not mean they are possessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why they don't even know. Pick him up. Kai, this guy has been so oppressed of the devil. This lady has dreams and she meets with people. Go out of her. Go out of her. Just let him, let him lie down when he's ready to stand up. This guy is so weak. He doesn't even know that he has been under all kinds of bondages of Satan.
who prayed, let me pray for you. Mama, you believe Jesus has authority over cancer? You do? Because he's going to go. Oh yes, it will go. Hmm? There your hand is there. See, I, I'm touching it. It's looking like a stone. Out of her! Out of her! Out of her! Devil of darkness. It's not cancer. It's a spirit. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. As the sun, as eternal light. Hallelujah. Mama, who brought Mama out? Eh? I said, who is Grace? Oh, I was actually talking about some. Bring the man on the wheelchair and on crutches. Let him come and stand here. Please, if we have not called your case, don't just come out. We'll give room for that. But let him stand. Sir, please, can you come and minister to this woman for time's sake? Bring him here. Sir, you're welcome. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Accident. On which leg? This leg. What's wrong with the leg? Operation. Operation. Yes. They did surgery. And it's not working. You want to walk? Yes. You believe Jesus will set you free? Clear the way for him. He was the son. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You believe in Jesus Christ? Can you walk without with it? Are you feeling pains? Yes. Right Where? Right what of this leg? Yes. Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. I set you free. Amen. I command your leg to straighten out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Walk. Come, follow me. Follow me. Can you walk? Try it. Just take a step and see. What's wrong with the legs? It's heavy. Where? But can you bend it like this? Try and bend it. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Could you do this before? Could you do this before? God is healing you. Keep moving it. Move it. Move it. You just do what I'm telling you to do. Move it. Move it. Now move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Can we try and walk now? Hold this one. Hold my hands. Walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Try and match it down. Is it because of the metal? There's a metal inside his leg. So it's limiting him from walking. Hallelujah. So they must remove the metal. They can't, oh, they put it here permanently. Lord, let this metal become his bones. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Melt away. Amen. Please, ministers, move across the crowd. We don't have time. Go I Okay, Jamfa is already ministering. Some people outside, just move and minister to people. Join them, Kenny. Someone should take on this role. Vivian. I'm hearing the name Vivian. Pastor, sir, yes. Vivian. Who is Vivian? A fair lady called Vivian. No, no, a fair lady called Vivian. The Lord is showing me a fair lady called Vivian. Vivian. Sister, stand up. Look at me. 
Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Thou foul devil. Go. 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 In Jesus' name. Be set free. Leave my love. Vivian. What's wrong with you? Eh? People come to you and oppress you in a dream. Is that correct? Do you know me? Have, you, have I talked with you before? You want to be free? You'll be free right now. Oga John, it's time for you to enter God's plan and purpose for your life. Are you listening to me? Because you are not supposed to be a photographer. Are you listening to me? You are supposed to have gone far beyond this level. God didn't just bring you to Koinonia to snap. Please take the, photo, the camera. Victor can snap, so be doing it in the interim. You believe what I'm telling you? Aha, uh -huh, because I see that how many people drink in your family? Tell the truth and shame the devil. How many? You and who? Again, you used to drink. Have you stopped? Completely. Praise God. But the Lord will set you free. Hmm? Because in your family, women. Uh -uh. You believe that? Eh? See, let me tell you the truth. This is not your destiny in Christ. This happened as a result of frustration. Is that correct? Many things. Cool. Didn't work. Many things happen. Even Waiek, you don't even have your complete result. Is that true? Help me. Is that true? That's true. God will set you free. Hallelujah. You believe that? I want to speak into your destiny and call it forth into where God wants you to be. That devil is a liar. Come out of him now. Come out of him. I release your glorious destiny. The days of oppression are over. Rise up beyond the photographer. Become the leader and the entrepreneur that God has destined for you to be. See, listen. It's not that this guy is lazy. Yo. I hope you know that. It's not that he's lazy. Ella, come. Abigail, come. Wumi, come. Three of you, come and stand here. For the sake of your families, the time has come. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. A devil of darkness. Out now. Now. Shatata rata. Reketele mo subariata. Brento capriata laka. Rakata baba baba baba. Out. Out. Fire upon you. Setele ke pariata. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Fire. 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 Be set free. Right now in the name of Jesus. You have a glorious destiny. No devil will hold you down. In the name of Jesus. Lawful captives be free. I release you. That devil of temper and anger. Go. Go. I command you be free. The plague of death over your family. Go. 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 I, come in, I command that terminal disease. Now it's time. Time up. Time up. You are a devil. Go in the name of Jesus. Be free. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That devil cannot stand. Fire upon you. It's time to be free. Time to be free. Time to be free. 
leave her, let her go. This lady has suffered too long. You've held her destiny down. Go in the name of Jesus. Once again, come. I stopped praying for you for a reason. Please take this guy up. This gentleman. Look at me. your life. Listen, listen. I saw upon this guy the spirit of Cain and I didn't know what it was. He was lying down there. That was why I walked there and laid my hands upon. You know the curse that was upon Cain? Bring them out. God is not done with them yet. You know the curse that was upon Cain? He said he won't die but he will be a wanderer. This is how this guy's life has been. Today you are in Lagos. Tomorrow you are here. Next tomorrow you are this. It's time for your freedom. Free you. He who has the sun has the time. My dear, come and stand here. Yes. Come and stand here. Birthday girl. You are the one who celebrated your birthday yesterday. You're welcome. We are going to pray and minister to people. The ministers are, sir, you, you are done? Ah, please pray. Oh, please take time and speak into their lives. I beg you. These people came to receive. Ministers, go around. Please prophesy to them. Where's Jamfa? Jakes, please, please move around. Where are the people I called out now? My dear, you know, the devil wants to make your life a waste. So you are moving, but you are not accomplishing anything. But the Lord loves you. And tonight, the eye of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. You believe that? Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Look at me. Just look at me. Lord, let this lady be free from every oppression of darkness. In the name of Jesus, be free. I set you free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at me. I'm seeing you pregnant. Drive every useless man out of your life. Are you listening to me? I'm not saying you are pregnant now. I'm saying, I'm saying in the realm of the spirit, not physically. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't, please, kick any man who wants to come and talk grammar around you. Because I'm seeing that you are going to three countries. Number one, South Africa. Huh? Number two, UK. Number three, Canada. These three countries. The Lord is taking you there. Hold on. But then I see a lot of resistance rising up from wherever. I may not be able to talk all this with you because we're in the presence of people. But I want to pray for you. It's time to see three things will happen. One, a passion for God you cannot recover from. The ministers are ministering to people around. While they are that devil, let me tell you, cast out every devil, prophesy, release people to their prophetic destinies. Let her go. Go! Go! Time up, thou devil of darkness. Be free now. Be free now. I command that wicked spirit. Depart from your life. Fire right now all over your body. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. All over you. Right now. Leave her, let her go. For she shall not be called Jabez. That's what the Lord says I should say. 
because you were born in sorrow, you will not be called Jabez. Tonight, I enlarge your coast in the spirit. My dear, look at me. From today, you will walk into your prophetic destiny. See, you don't know what it is that has happened to you now. Even you, you cannot answer. But look at me. You are a very good girl. Are you listening to me? But you are assuming the character of another person. Tonight, the Lord sets you free. This lady is a wonderful lady beyond your imagination. But sometimes, you see her doing things that even her does not know. Because I see the spirit of anger and rage. I mean rage almost to kill somebody. But the Lord sets you free. And this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing you move from the side and you are climbing a ladder and the Lord says restore. This is what I prophesy. Restore. This is what will begin to happen to you. Restore. Hallelujah. If I Ifai, hearing the name Ifai, Ifai, who is Ifai? Ifai, now, if you brought someone for healing from outside Zaria, quickly bring them forth, quickly, we have to round up, quickly, please bring them. If you invited someone, no matter how far you are outside, bring the person, sir, come. It's time for the Lord to set you free. Not only in your health, but on every area of your life. You believe that? Hold my hands. Both of your hands. All right now, I speak to you. I open up that door. I challenge the works of darkness. Go by the fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. The Lord perfects you. Who brought this man? What's wrong with him? Bring them forth. He has what? His sight. He used to be bigger than this. But what happened? Because I'm seeing something like a rock upon his head. Who is Silvanus? Sir, does he drink? Who is your friend that drinks? He's drinking. You need to get him born again and see those results. Alright? I want to pray for you right now. Your weight will come back. Your life will be restored. And your eyes, you will begin to see clearly. Hallelujah. Amen. It's Stephanus. Silvanus. From where? From Heindel Road. From where? Heindel Road. Eh? I A U. Hein Dogo. Ah, okay. You are born again. You love Jesus Christ. But you won't do ministry the way you are planning. You will start afresh with God. Alright? So disable all those man of God thing. You will start afresh. Primary one, two, three, four, five. God will anoint you. Right? I'm going to pray for you. You believe what I'm saying. And leave all your friends who are deceiving you. Huh? You are going to be a great man, but you are not yet that man, so you will stay in the school of the spirit. Hmm? These teachings that you people jump and pride over, they are basic things in the spirit. Let God walk with you. From today, you begin a new journey. Hold my hands. Lord, put a fire upon him right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A new beginning, fresh start. Just breathe in and out as deep as you can. In and out. Baba, be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Who brought
brought him. He came on his own. What's wrong with you? My grain, put your hands on your head. Lay it. Please pour the prayer request. You will be a mighty tool in the hands of God. Huh? Mighty tool. But you will first set you free. Then you will begin a walk with him. Any appetite and anything that does not belong to him will give way. You will be surprised what you begin to do in your life. Okay? Look at me. What am I doing? One leg in. Where's the other leg? Why? Because this is how your life is. It's time for you to love him with every passion. Hmm? So I break everything that is not of God in the realm of the spirit. Let the fire of God take over. Take over your life. Take over her life. Now, foul spirit, let her go. Lord, anoint her and use her. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Please do it quickly. Someone help her. Lift up your hands. I look to you. the sun rising over your family and then I heard this song I will wait for you Jesus you're the sun in my the days of oppression are over you are standing on behalf of your family Something is happening to your father right where I'm holding. The Lord is setting him free. Today the Lord is giving you the mantle that was upon your mother. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Because as I look at you I see her face. And the Lord says I should tell you to run with the spirit of power. Whatever you decree will happen. The Lord will establish you and you will be a mother indeed. That all your times of tears will be taken away by a new joy. Take this message to your father for the Lord visits your family tonight. What was I doing? Okay, the ministers are still... Okay, those that are around, Pastor Williams is here. Just, the ministers are ministering, let them continue, but... Those that are around, even if it's just me and Pastor Williams, please, let's pray on the request. After we pray on the request, I'm going to begin to move prophetically and speak. This is the time you will receive. Are you listening to me? Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to pray in tongues. Bishop. your hands shaba la bara do krasta bara bara rata kata prata kada bara bara paro kapranda pradeshida do miracles oh god 
Solve every problem here, oh God. And for all our Facebook, Twitter, these Egyptians, you see them no more. 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 These Egyptians, you are conquered. Whatever is conquered here is conquered. All over this country and around the world, we release testimonies, miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your hand, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your great power, let there be miracles on this request. Miracles, supernatural miracles, terminate sicknesses, terminate diseases, never to return. Creative miracles in the name of Jesus. All supernatural jobs, supernatural wisdom, let it be done by your spirit. Miracles by your spirit. Supernatural miracles by your spirit. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I see. I found a reason. Lift your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I want you to receive every prophetic word because the creative power of God is going to swing into motion. The creative and prophetic power. Lift your hands. As I pray, I'd like you to shout a loud amen with your spirit. Hallelujah. Right now. Doors of delay. I command you. Be opened. In the name of us. Delay. Be gone. Delay. Be gone. Delay. Delay in marriage. Delay in jobs. I curse it to his root I release you in the name of Jesus every academic bondage every academic bondage kateka leko sopa repete latu zabadi adaka in the name of Jesus, be free, be free, be free. Mental blockage, be free from it. Academic bondage, I set you free. This is the best exam you would have ever written in your institutions of learning. I prophesy it by the power of the highest. I call this session for you a season of sevenfold restoration. 
sevenfold restoration. Sevenfold, sevenfold, not one fold, not two fold. I speak it. Where you have been victimized, any student here who has been victimized right now, whether it is project or service year or whatever, I change it in the realm of the spirit. Any one of your loved ones that has no job between today and the middle of April, I command fearful supernatural joy in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every womb called Barry. I don't care whether the womb has been removed or not. Right now, in nine months' time, you will celebrate miracle children. Be open, every barren womb. Be open. Hallelujah. Every plague of death over your life or your family members. Make sure you are lifting your hands up. Every plague of death by the blood that speaketh better things because I see miscarriages that the devil wants to bring to many families. I see miscarriage of children. Every plague of death, I command it to pass over you forever. In the name of Jesus. He said, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, even thy God, has anointed you with a type of oil called the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. The anointing that brings you above, I call you in the realm of the spirit, rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up a new level of prosperity. A new level of lifting. A new level of wisdom. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. As surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, let a cloak of favor hit you where you are. Favor! 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 Every terminal disease in this place, HIV, cancer, in the name of Jesus, we terminate it once and for all. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. SS, AS, we change your genotype in the realm of the spirit in the name of Jesus. Every demonic oppression that is responsible for where you are and where your family is tonight. It is time for the new anointing. Guard up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. I command every captivity over your family by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Captivity ends in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm 
standing in the spirit before a gate and the Lord is telling me let God's people walk to it and move forward in their life I command you by the spirit and according to the vision of the Lord to me move forward go forward no more stagnation in ministry enter your place of anointing enter your place of rest enter it I place you inside it I take you into the mantle of your life the prophetic oil of your life I release it move forward go forward in the name of Jesus Christ and I speak to you every Egyptian you see today you are the one who knows the Egyptian so lift your hands with faith in your spirit everything called an Egyptian as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives once and for all bye bye to them forever bye bye to them forever in your family bye bye to them bye bye to them I release signs wonders I release miracles take it take it take it take it from the depth of my heart according to the order of grace take your miracle take your miracle take your miracle your hand touches from today in the name that is above all names I command it to multiply my brother stand here bring this lady come this is what I'm demonstrating to you what I saw in the spirit that God is connecting you to the people who will take you to the next level of your life may the Lord take you where your gift will be needed may the Lord take you where your gift I command demand upon your oil demand prophetic demand I command every uncompleted family project every uncompleted family project the Lord shows me the number 21 in the realm of the spirit and I pray that between now and the next 21 days I command angels of help I release it to your families receive it receive it help help is coming Zion's help the helper of Zion move across families move across families I tell you as surely as the Lord lives between today and the next 21 days you will see fearful testimonies by the hand of God hallelujah lift your hands I impart spiritual gift upon you at the count of seven let fresh fire fall upon everybody every one two three my god do it i see angels four five six there it is come on take it take it take it take it take it outside take it take it take it in the name of jesus take it Take it. 
break it. Fire. The prophetic, the apostolic, the evangelistic, teaching mantles, pastoral graces, leadership, entrepreneurship. I fire it into your spirit. Everywhere you have been deserted so that no man goes through you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of the Lord Jesus, doors be open. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Many of you don't know what breakthrough is. You just receive it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. An angel stands in this row. Take it. Breakthrough. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Right to the back. Take it. Take it. the Lord gives you a new name whatever you came here for whatever request you brought I command go back with a testimony go back with a complete testimony whatever you came here with go back with a testimony in the name of Jesus and every one of you who came from far and near to catch a fire and catch an anointing go back with that fire go back and reproduce these things and even greater receive it receive it Jesus now listen the Bible says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish listen to me everybody inside and outside you're here and you've been struggling with your life the Lord has been speaking to you you know that now is the time to make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to me, I will in no wise cast away. He said, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. You've never made this decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially many of you outside. Tonight is your night. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is saying, How long? Will you run away when I have a better life for you? When I can save you from eternal condemnation and lead you to the path of grace? Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. Please, as you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Hallelujah. At the count of three, inside and outside, I want you to leave your seat and rush out here. The Lord is calling you. You've not given your heart to the Lord. Leave your seat. They are coming. Appreciate them. Right now, leave your seat. Come right to the front. Clap for them. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. You need to make it right to the Lord. Come out. Or you've been born again once, but you've derailed. Don't stay outside. No matter how far you are, find your way to the front. Forget about your friend. Please run quick. Quick, quick, do it fast. Keep clapping, Koinonia. 
Thank you, Lord, for a harvest. Don't sit back. There are still more people outside. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Don't wrestle with him. Sister, brother, the time has come. There are still more people I see outside. Keep coming. We'll wait for you for one minute. Keep coming. No matter what you've done, there is a fresh start. Celebrate them. The devil is a liar. He will not hold you back. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Keep coming. You are welcome. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for making this decision. Hallelujah. I like to pray for you. I like to lead you to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far and how long you have gone. The Lord can give you a new start tonight. Are you listening to me? The Lord can give you a new start tonight. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. Lift your right hand to heaven. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Mean it from your heart. This is not a Bible recitation. Lord Jesus. I come before you. Acknowledging you as my savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Today, I receive the gift of salvation. Come into my heart. Give me a new start. In the name of Jesus, I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. Make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From today, forward ever, backward never. The things I used to do, I'll do them no more. Because Jesus is Lord of my life. Father, I commend these ones to you. They have come out to make a genuine decision. Because they love you and they acknowledge you. My God, I pray that their salvation be genuine. And I pray that from today, you begin a walk in their lives. I command that you are free from every challenge you used to go through. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let peace return to your heart. Holy Spirit, I commend you to this one. This is the assignment you have given on earth. I pray that you do great things in their life. In the name of Jesus, my brother, you are the one who drove me one time. The Lord will begin to do great things in your life and even in your family for this great decision you have made. In the name of Jesus appreciate them in Jesus name now in one minute I'd like you to follow the elder the, I said the elders follow the ushers hallelujah and they'll be able to have your details and will follow you up when sir Jakes Monday tomorrow tomorrow what time tomorrow 7 p.m. on the dot please be at chapel pastor Jakes will be following you up we we'll have foundational teachings that will bring to guide you and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ah, okay. The small ones, please, the very young ones, you're welcome. You can come by 4 p.m., all right, so that you are not roaming around 4 p.m. If you have to explain to your parents, please tell them you got born again. And if you need, if your parents want to talk to any of the ministers to confirm, no problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now follow the ushers. God bless you. Appreciate them. You're worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time of attending this glorious meeting called Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and jump out quickly. Quickly. Appreciate them. Come on, Koinonia. There are many people outside. We celebrate you. Come on. Koinonia celebrates you. Give them a big welcome. If there's anybody sitting close to you who is coming for the first time, ask the person to come out. We have a blessing for you. Keep clapping. Wow. Keep clapping. They are coming. Please hurry up. Hurry up. Make way for them. Ushers, direct them.
Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you, mommy. Keep coming. Keep coming. There's still space for you. There's still space. We acknowledge you and we want to tell you thank you for coming. Koinonia, put together by Eternity Network International. We thank God for what he's doing in our midst. How many of you were blessed tonight? I assure you, you will never be the same. You will go back and meet fearful testimonies. I assure you, you will know you met God tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly celebrate you for making our time and the sacrifice to come here. Hallelujah. We are here every Friday building the word and helping us to understand the Holy Spirit and walk in partnership with him. We want to pray for you and prophesy upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands upon them. Listen, we are anointed. So if we pray for you, believe it, it will happen in your life. Father, we pray that you bless them. Anoint everyone. May the Lord give you a testimony that will confirm that you met God tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you a testimony. Come out of her now. Out. Now. Out of her. Come out of her. Your testimony starts. Come out. Out of her now. now. Devil, come on. Out. Out of her. Come out of her. Shelakata barana kataya. Dekebreteke barata kalande. Out. Out. You have oppressed her for too long. She came for koinonia. Thou devil of darkness. All right, your time is up. Go. Now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That demon of lust, leave her. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. You're free. In Jesus' name. Pick her up. Sister, you have received a visitation from the Lord. For you would have come back with the same problems you carried and brought here. But the Lord has visited you tonight. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And for every one of you, don't you think we are playing when we are praying for you? We truly pray that you will go back with a testimony and an experience. That the things you used to do that are not consistent with the Lord, you will do them no more. Every bad relationship we came here with, we break it. You will go back. You won't find the other people again. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord connect you to destiny help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every bondage of Satan. We set you free from it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. I'd like you to quickly follow the ushers. They will have your details. And we will pray for you. And follow you up. We are here every Friday. The Lord bless you. Keep coming and invite others in Jesus' name. Celebrate them and appreciate them as they go back. Let's take the following announcements very quickly and we're out of here. Presbyo Consults Nigeria presents the Real Entrepreneurs Forum. Hallelujah. How to start and grow your business, how to raise capital, why most entrepreneurs fail, and so on and so forth. This is a business meeting. The facilitators are Mr. Femi Bolaji, the CEO of Intact Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Francis Yusuf, CEO Real Eagle Springs, and Mr. Victor Mataya, CEO Aspire Network. The date is tomorrow, 23rd of February. Saturday time is 9 p.m. The venue is VET Multipurpose Hall. Watch out for the posters and please be there tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. This was put together by one of us. Please honor him and get blessed. Hallelujah. We are proud of this. Hallelujah. I think this is Isaac, right? That's Isaac. Hallelujah. 
We are proud to dedicate our new envelopes for mission and our school of ministry. Are you happy about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've made envelopes for our school of ministry and we've made envelopes for missions. So from today, anytime you are coming for Koinonia, hallelujah, as the Lord blesses you and as the Lord grants you grace, come prepared not only to give your offering, but we'll drop the envelopes. You may not need to make any special call. You have your seed, whatever, from this night to sow into the school of ministry. These are arms of ENI. Hallelujah. The school of ministry is directed by Bishop Stan and the missions is directed by Jake's. Hallelujah, Pastor Jakes. So I'd like you to be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. So every time you come from next week, inside and outside, we'll just drop the envelopes. You have your tithe, offering, and then appropriately just put in your seed there and we'll pray on it and speak into your life. I want to assure you that this house is fruitful ground. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are faithful with every money that comes and we use it for the reason why it was given. We dedicate this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this house. We pray that everyone who will give for our school of ministry to raise and to train our students and to train generals in the spirit, my God, I pray that you will cause them to flourish and enjoy your blessings in the name of Jesus. And we pray for our mission, so God, as we visit hospitals, prisons, police centers, mission fields, and we supply welfare to many people, my God, I pray that whoever partners with this project will experience an open heavens. We dedicate this. It will only be used for the glory of the king. No man will be glorified but Jesus alone. We dedicate it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. From after the service, if you feel God is leading you the, em the envelope, don't go with them, please. You just come and we'll place them there and then you just drop your seed. House on the Rock Foundation, Zaria presents Tehila Africa. A crazy African praise. The date is 28th February. Time is 10.30 p.m. Venue is Charity and Faith Missions. Ministering will be Steve Strings and many more. Dress code strictly traditional. Hallelujah. This is announcement from our school of ministry. The closing date for the submission of the forms for ENI School of Ministry is next week Friday. Please listen carefully. Next week Friday will be closing for all the prospective students. And now the director has instructed that um, the fact that you have the form does not mean you, you are automatically a student. Hallelujah. And he said, you hold on with the school fees. We are going to go through um, a screening process and then we'll place the list. Am I right, sir? Bishop? Am I correct? Okay. Uh, by the grace of God, the Lord has granted us grace to secure a venue. We'll be using God's time for our school of ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He granted it unto us free of charge. Absolutely free. Hallelujah. We thank God for it. Learn to celebrate what God is doing in the house. So please, the first of March, are there still forms? Okay, well, there are still forms. I understand that there are some of you, especially those who are from Kano and Mina. You can meet Bishop afterwards and you get it. And I know there was a pastor that told me he would be around. Please wait and collect. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 